Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So if you've been watching some of my videos, especially the JDM Seiko videos on the SARG 001 and the SARG 009, I'm here to bring you another watch from that same mysterious friend of mine, Mark. Uh, he's actually uh, my friend that lent me the original Mark 16 that I did a review on and also did in my pilot's review. So ever since Mark and I have become really good friends within the last year, uh, his watch collection continues to grow. And if you saw my video on the SARG 001, the white dial alpinist, I mentioned that I had to shoot that video in a one take. Uh, reason being that my friend Mark had taken off to uh, Hong Kong for a trip. And I'm so proud of him. He of course came back with another watch purchase. Um, another IWC, which is what this review is all about. Now, I've always had a very healthy respect for IWC, but I'll be honest, there have never been a watch that I've really lost it after. Um, you know, for similar money, I've always been more of like a Breitling or even a Rolex guy. I just, I didn't get it. I've always thought they were good looking watches, but I have to say the one he just came back with and this review is all about, the Le Petit Prince Chrono, I would definitely wear this watch. Um, I very, very, very much like this watch. And if he wants to leave it with me, and I'm sure he'll see this at some point, Mark, feel free to give me your watch for free. But uh, yeah, so um, he bought this thing brand new on his trip in Hong Kong and he's enjoying it so far. And he was nice enough to bring it by so I could do a quick review on it. So as always guys, hope you guys find this helpful and let's go ahead and we'll check it out. Um, two things first, one is yes, I know I need a haircut. So <laughs> I gotta get around to it, I've been busy. And second, uh, the lighting, please forgive, it wasn't optimal. It's been a little dark here lately as it's happening with our seasons going into winter. But uh, all that said, let's go ahead and check it out. All right, guys, let's go ahead and get started. So here we have the uh, outer IWC box. And as soon as this thing focuses, you'll of course see that it says uh, the Pilot's Chrono, Le Petit Prince up here. And the model number in this case is 3777, in this case ending in a 14. Um, it says made in Swiss. That's always a good sign as it were. Let's go ahead and open it up. Packaging. Let's see if I can get it out of here. There we go. Nice IWC marked box. And uh, to those of you guys that are out there driving German cars, especially BMWs made in the mid to late 2000s, you're familiar with what this box feels like. The kind of rubberized uh, texture that BMW and the Germans in particular like to put over uh, the plastic in their cars, this is the same kind of thing. There's like that rubbery texture. BMW puts this over a lot of like the plastic on their doors and on their switch gear. Same kind of feel. I've never felt it on a watch box before. It's very interesting. It does actually feel quite nice. There's of course the IWC Schaffhausen logo and in between you have this beautiful little kind of silver band. So it's a good nice black and silver contrast theme going on. The hinges are back there in the back and uh, inside. Let's go ahead and open it up. There's of course the lovely watch which we'll come back to in a second. But first, if I take this cover down you will see you know, IWC's kind of uh, motto and pride for uh, manufacture from Schaffhausen. And if I tilt the box back down and if we actually look underneath it, of course, the whole pedestal comes out and there is some nice little packaging here and you actually have a really nice presentation for the manuals and some accessories. So inside this little envelope, which anybody that's ever bought an Apple product before, this will look very familiar to you. You have a nice little uh, polishing cloth Presentations, very nice. Nice stock they used on the paper. And then down here, you of course have your manuals and um, you know warranty and guarantee paperwork. So very nice presentation. Again, if you guys have ever opened an Apple product, the presentation on the manuals and this in particular, this is right out of an Apple playbook. They did a nice job. And if you're gonna copy anybody for packaging, Apple is definitely the company in my mind you wanna copy. They do it so well. So, but back to what we're all here to see, the watch itself. Let me go ahead and take it out of here and let me go ahead and remove it from this little pillow here. And we'll get the box out of the way. So here we have the Le Petit Prince Chrono. Uh, again, reference 3777, this one ending in 14. Um, the 777 part is a little bit nice if you're an aircraft enthusiast like I am. Anything nodding to the Boeing 777 is always fun, but of course I'm sure that's not why they named it. But being a pilot watch, there's a nice little bit of trivia for you. Um, so this thing is beautiful. Talking about dimensions, just to get started, you have a 43 millimeter case, you have a 15 millimeter thickness, and um, strap is 20 mil between the lugs. And of course you have a beautiful Arabic numeral pilot style face. 
So you have a running seconds complication over here at nine. You have a 30 minute totalizer up here at 12 and you have a 12 hour counting timer down here at six o'clock. Um, you can also see that there is a day of the week and day of the month indicator. Now, any of you guys out there that are very familiar um, with watch movements, especially Valjoux 7750 based watch movements, this arrangement is going to look very familiar to you, and it should. So this is an IWC modified version of a 7750 based architecture. Um, in this case, I believe it has 31 joules and about a 44 hour power reserve. Um, I know you guys have asked me what IWC has done to modify the movement, and I'll be honest and say that I've looked, and I don't really know of a place that lists out all the modifications they've done. I'm sure they've tweaked it to get it within chronometer specs, um, but you can definitely tell the underlying ETA architecture, and that's not a negative thing. Uh, those of you that are familiar with this movement know that this movement is extremely reliable, and it's used in so many watches because it's just been a proven durable workhorse for what it is. So. You know, part of the character of this watch is, of course, the dial, and I apologize, this light isn't doing it justice, but this dial has a gorgeous, really kind of royally blue color to it, and it definitely has a depth and a richness to it that this camera is just never going to capture. Um, you may also be seeing a little bit of a blue tint over the sapphire crystal, and you're actually picking up on the AR coating. Um, for non-watch nerds, AR equals anti-reflective. And this is actually a dual-sided AR, so as you can see, as it's picking up light, it's kind of casting it away, and you get a little bit of uh, like a bluish tint. And the great thing about AR-coated dials is when the light isn't quite hitting them, the sapphire almost disappears, and it almost looks like the watch actually has uh, no, no crystal on it at all. It almost looks like a naked dial, which is a extremely cool optical illusion. So traditional chronograph features based on the architecture, of course. So the top pusher, as you can see, starts the chronograph and traditionally it also stops it and the bottom pusher resets it. Now over here at three o'clock, you have a traditional crown. And I'll see if I can get this to focus in here because it is a little shiny. It is marked IWC with the IWC logo. And amazingly, this one actually is screw down. A lot of people that use the 7750 don't use a screw down crown. So um, it is screw down and I've just now unscrewed it. And as it's based on 7750 architecture, first position is winding. Second position, as you can see, you can change the date by rotating it in one direction. So we'll set it back to today's date and then rotating it the other direction as you can see, you can quick set change the day of the week. Pretty standard. And if I pull it all the way out, you'll see that it is hacking as well. So the second hand stops and you can accurately set the time. Um, you know, I've used a bunch of 7750s and watches that I've had and I've manipulated a lot of them. And I will say that this thing winds a lot better than a lot of the ones that I've had previous experience with, especially my Nava timers. So I don't know if IWC did something to modify it, but I will say in that case, um, the crown action on this is actually quite satisfying. So I'll go ahead and screw the crown back in. And um, here's of course a nice side of the case. You'll see that it's actually brushed and then you have bits of pieces of like high polish, like the, the bezel going around the sapphire itself and the pushers are high polish. You have a nice contrast going on between the bushers it being high polish and the brush sides adds a nice kind of effect. And being a tool watch like a pilot, it's really nice to see that they use brushed. Because um, being a tool watch, I think brushed lets up more of a utilitarian look to it, which is quite satisfying for what it is. Now, what makes this watch really cool, and I mentioned earlier it's the Le Petit Prince, is the case back on it. And so, there actually is a little Prince, a Le Petit Prince on the back of the case, as you can see there. And um, he's also wearing his little cape there as well. So, very cool. It mentions that this is the special edition of the Le Petit Prince. And you can see there, and it also mentions that this is uh, water resistant to six bar. Now, the strap that this actually comes on, I know a lot of you guys that watch me are really into your shoes, so you'll of course appreciate this strap. The strap is made by Santoni, and that is the same uh, one you will see making nice Italian leather shoes, other Italian leather goods. It is marked IWC, it was made specifically for IWC, but there is of course the uh, Santoni logo as well. Um, it is a nice calfskin strap. You can see it's kind of like a cigar colored brown. It's very pretty and you have some nice contrast stitching going on. Now this is an original IWC uh, buckle. Um, however, this originally had a standard buckle and now it has a, uh, a fold over which was added by the owner. Um, as they're such a collector, they're now accessorizing their watches, which of course we all approve. Uh, the machining is very nicely done. And of course you can see the IWC logo there. 
There's a nice texture going down the center. Um, finishing is top notch. There's no rough edges whatsoever. And it folds over and secures nicely. And of course, there's a nice little IWC logo there as well. Um, it's got a nice brushed effect, adding to like the utilitarian look of the watch. So all in all, beautiful watch. Again, 43 millimeters, so just for uh, comparison, let's go ahead and throw it on the wrist. And I'm currently wearing my 40 millimeter GMT Master II, so let's do a little bit of a wrist shot. Snap it on, and there we go. So just for comparison, you can see that it definitely wears a little bit bigger than my 40 millimeter GMT Master. Has awesome presence. Um, the owner of this watch is actually smaller than me, and I think this watch looks like a, a reasonably large on my wrist, so it's amazing that they pull it off so well. But um, as you can see, it has a lot of lovely wrist presence. And you know, I've always had a great respect for IWC, but I've never really lusted after one, with the exception of maybe the Portuguese many years ago. However, I would say this is an IWC that I would be happy to wear. Um, I think it's got a really cool classic look to it. Very much inspires me and reminds me of uh, great fighters of the World War II era. I think a lot of those old vintage airplanes with traditional avionics in them, I think this thing would look right at home in one of those cockpits. So, and again, you can just see how the AR coating just really bays the, the dial in that like soft bluish hue. So, hope you guys enjoyed. And with all that said, let's go ahead and we'll jump back. All right, guys, welcome back. Hopefully you enjoyed the review. Like I said, this is a watch that I could definitely see myself wearing. And it's kind of funny, you know, as I mentioned in the review, uh, considering um, how I'm six foot three and the watch I feel is like a perfect size for me, um, you know, more and one more reason for me to like to wear it. I think 43 mil is like an awesome size. So I, I definitely covet the watch. I love the little prints on the back of it. I think it's kind of a cool touch. Everything about the piece really speaks to me. And um, I hope you guys enjoyed the review too. As always, if you like what you saw here, um, please let me know by giving me a like. If you have thoughts, feedback, questions, concerns, comments, leave them down below. I don't respond to them all because I just don't have the time, but I do try to respond to the ones that I can, and I do read them, and I appreciate your feedback. We're all part of a community. Don't just leave comments for me. Um, whatever you post there, other people in the community will join in, and you guys can create a collaboration and a chat. This is, we're all part of a community, and comments is a way we, we communicate with each other. Um, my stuff for social media is below, Instagram, stuff like that, if you guys have interest I'm pretty boring um, but all that said guys you know I know we're in the middle of a holiday right now hope you guys are having a wonderful holiday and if you'll forgive me I'm exhausted you guys are stressing me out and uh, I have no energy anymore so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna go to sleep now so thank you guys so much and I'll catch you guys in the next video